So given that we're all trapped inside and that uh, you'll probably get into mischief if you're not uh, entertained, we've decided that we'll release a whole heap of little YouTube clips about painting waves, various aspects. And the first one we're going to do is just a very simple wave with some spray on a, on a black background. And that'll cover some of the basics. Um, and it'll be a nice kind of dramatic, but simple image. So I'm just going to make a simple, some simple marks like that just to get me started and I'm using free flow this is on a black canvas so I'm using free flow because free flow is uh, very 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 strong and it covers very very well and this is pretty much now the foundation for the whole picture I'm using a scrappy old paintbrush because that helps me get that lovely broken finish now this is pretty much what the whole painting um, hinges on. Because there's not a lot of light in this picture, or it's not actually in the picture, or the light source isn't actually in the picture anyway, anywhere, we're going to um, most of this picture will be about reflections. That will be kind of the light source and that will be the thing that we focus on the most. So I'm just going to do that spray there. Like that. So I'm just, I've just thinned down some white now and as you can see that's pretty thin. Oops. But this will be the bit that um, we'll use this to kind of frame the wave and to set everything up. So we've got that there. Now that, of course, will be reflected. So we're going to use that reflection there, like that, to give us our shape of our wave, like that. And because that reflection is quite strong, let's, we're going to assume that that's almost the light source and that as we come out here, everything else will kind of fade away. And that will disappear off into the distance like that. So we should be starting to see the bones of the picture start to appear already. And the beautiful thing about doing this at this stage, putting the, the framework down just using white over the black, is that if I'm not happy with anything, I can just get some black and come back and straighten up those lines. Um, this whole picture will relate to lines really in a weird kind of way all of those lines will be what gives the wave its shape and its its direction check the description below and there'll be a pdf somewhere attached to that so you can um, have a closer look at that yourself if you want so i'm not entirely happy of where those lines are so i'm just going to do this and i've got my black here and i'm just going to fix them up this is the great thing about doing this on the black background like that. You can always come back and push things around like that. If you're not happy, there we are. So while that black's drying, um, I'm just gonna let you know that I'm gonna keep the color to a minimum in this because this is quite a dark image and there's no really strong light source. There's not a lot of light penetrating down into the water or, or not a lot of places where I can actually put a lot of color. So this is going to be quite subdued. Okay, I'm just going to turn this on its side because I want to just get some of these. And sometimes they're just easier if you turn the canvas on its side a little bit. Now you'll notice that these lines here are sort of pinching up as they kind of come around that corner there they sort of pinch a little bit
And uh, don't be scared to, you know, move your canvas around like that so that you can draw out some of those longest lines. I think I just went 360 degrees. <laughs> And again, this is very, 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 very thin uh, free flow. And as I get further away, I'm letting the paint diminish in the brush as I get further away from the parts that I want to be strong. And as it gets, you can see the paint's diminishing here as I go out into those darker areas. Like that. You can, if you want, leave this very monochromatic, um, just black and white, if you like. I'm going to mix a little bit of grey in here. And, and this is sort of an image where you can just feel your way through it. And if you feel it needs more colour, add some more colour, which is what I'll do. I'll add a little bit of colour towards the end, but you can bail out at any time and call it finished. So I'm just going to mix some, uh, some black and white together and make it nice, lovely, soft, silvery grey and put in some intermediate bits and pieces and then come back with some white and then add some colour later. Okay, so I'm just going to again flip it because a lot of this, these lines kind of need to be drawn out and it's kind of easier to do that. Um, that sound you can hear too by the way is my finger resting on the canvas so that I can keep the brush the right distance away. Now this, these colours should dry back so you might not see much of them towards the end but they'll be in there somewhere. I might just pull a couple out there just to suggest. Um, and just a, a, another little tip, you'll notice that my easel doesn't have a lip on it here. Sometimes drawing these lines out like this can be a pain in the bum when there's a lip on the on there. You can't get the, the brush in close enough. Let me have a quick look at that. And remembering of course you can still go back later on with your black and just tidy a few bits up. Let's get up into there like that. I really like the way a wave folds over. So as I come further in here, I'm gonna start really bending those lines. Like that. So I've added a little bit of white to that and I'm just gonna flip this up again, just cause I, it's easy to do all these lines from this angle. That. Now I'm just going to turn this back over this way and you'll see I sort of did these lines here before. Each of these lines is kind of like a, a ripple that's running up the face of the wave like that and so it's going to have a little bit more light on it and you'll notice sometimes with those waves they're, with waves they're really quite defined that that little bit there that's a bit too much paint. Good thing it's on a black background huh? <laughs> I'm just going to define a couple of those ripples a little bit more. Maybe another one there like that. And same here. Like that. And I'm just going to, just with that grey, just start breaking up the top of that wave a little bit. And 
There we are. So I've mixed up a bit of phthalo blue and phthalo green, believe it or not. And I'm just putting a little bit of color in here like that. And I'm just kind of breaking up, making it a bit chunky as the wave starts to break apart up there. Now I'm just going to turn this on its side again and take most of the paint off. And I'm just going to get into those, those kind of ripples or wavelets that are going up the face of the wave and start to come out here. Now, because that's in the distance, we've lost a lot of color, but up here in the foreground where it's close to the viewer, I'm just going to roll that over again and I've thinned this color right out. I'm just going to start putting some of that blue in here like that. Now, because we're working with acrylics and this is, uh, I'm putting the paint on quite wet, it's going to look very, very different from how it does when it's dry. Um, and unfortunately there's no formulas for that. <laughs> you just have to kind of keep practicing until you know what it's going to do when it dries. But anyway, we're just running a little bit of color through there like that. Just to kind of add to the illusion of those lines and half of them you won't even see. I am going to put a bit more blue in the face of that wave because that wave is sort of quite perpendicular re relative to your eye you will tend to see a bit more color in there. And this is one way of doing it. You can actually also do it with a very dry brush and sort of scrub in the barest hint of color and then come back and put your, all, of the, all of the lines in over the top of it to tidy it up a bit. But you know, this is just a little, a fun thing. Just Get a bit more colour in there, like that. I'm sort of imagining that there's a, uh, a spotlight somewhere in the distance shining out to sea and there's this wave that's picking up all the light in the darkness and probably a surfer somewhere in there thinking I wonder if there's any sharks out there. I wonder if I can get a wave. So I got my phthalo blue and phthalo green and I've added a little bit of white to that. And what I'm just gonna do is create the impression just up under here, under the lip like that, that there's a little bit of light shining back through that steeper part of the wave like that. We just want a hint, just a hint. I'm just going to run that down there like that, just for a bit of interest. Now, once upon a time, I would have said, go and get a surf magazine and go and look at waves, but there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of waves on the internet at the moment. So just troll through them and start looking in detail at this lip, of, at this kind of lip area. And you don't have to paint it exactly right. You've just got to represent it, which is what I'm doing here. And there's, it's always a little bit steeper just in front of those, those ripples there. So we'll bump that up. And that, in theory, should dry back a little bit darker. Bring the odd one down around a bit more, like that. And while I've got that color, a few little lines here in the foreground like that. Now you can see the wave starting to be defined a little bit more. You might have liked it, as I said before, when it was kind of dramatic and dark and just a few lines, but you know, it's not a lot of value in that as a tutorial. <laughs> I 
So you can, as I said before, bail out of this whenever you want. So I've mixed up um, almost a neat phthalo green and white, and I'm just going to get up in here a little bit like that. It went a little bit hard there. But we can cheat. I'll follow that those lines around a little bit here like this. Which I'm not sure that's the best angle. Go that way. <laughs> Occasionally I've watched this back and I feel a little bit sick after watching the canvas rotate a few times. So sorry about that everyone. Occasionally I'll pull the, um, the brush out of the line of the camera um, and to clean the brush uh, and I do it on my shirt because I can't be bothered going back to a rag so that explains my filthy shirt in case you're wondering. Okay I'm pretty happy with that I might just clean the last bits off the brush with a few little lines here in the foreground very very soft very subtle that and we'll finish it off with some neat white all right so now I'm just going to get this white and this is sort of where all the detail comes in I'm just going to use the corner of the brush while I've got a lot of paint on it and do all of these bits here now there's a little piece missing I'm just going to do this like that because the wave sort of goes around sort of the corner a little bit that doesn't make sense but I'll explain in a minute see we've got a little bit of lip over here a little bit of lip there as the spray comes off and that's where it folds back down there like that so I'm just going to as I said while I've got all that strong white on the brush do all those little dots and splattery bits Kind of create the impression of the wave breaking up as it folds over. So <clears throat> I just want to reflect this lip here now. So I'm going to start it about there. I don't want it to look come up under here so much. I'll bring it down there. So I'm just going to very softly start off like that. see the brush is getting a little bit dry there you've got to find the right amount of moisture and the right amount of pigment for this so I recommend uh, having a black blank canvas somewhere close by that you can just test your brush on each time because it, it there really is a the right amount of paint to have in your brush let's have a look at that I think maybe I made that come back this way a little bit too much I might just bring that down there So I'm just changing my brush now. I'm going to something that's, you know, quite beaten up, as you can see. Um, but I've just cleaned it. And if you have a look there, there's way too much water in that. So I'll... All right, so my lovely scraggly brush, brush should be good to, to go with uh, getting all of these spray bits here. But I'll just give you a little hint. 
Um, really important to keep your palette um, organized when you're using really strong colors like phthalo blue and white. Keep them separate. <laughs> I've just washed my brush a couple of times because I keep finding a little bit of phthalo blue on my um, palette. So I'm just going to right there like that. And I'm just going to concentrate that. In fact, that's actually too dry, that brush. I'm just going to add a bit more color there. I don't mind this being quite strong. So I'm just going to concentrate that white in a few places like that. So this part's really important. You've really got to get the consistency right. So I recommend trying this on a, on a different canvas somewhere. So I'm literally just blowing that spray back off the waves like that. And it's sort of concentrating in those areas where you had those white blobs before. Just, I really want to get that sense of it being blown back into the background like that. Might just put another little one down there, hey? Okay, go back to a smaller brush again. You can let your brush do the work here a certain extent by just kind of jamming it in like that and it'll kind of make that nice kind of broken effect. You know, like the back of the waves being blown off. Oops. Like that, and we can also, if we want to, just with a very dry brush, and that's probably a little bit too much. Just follow that line, but and that'll put some shimmer on the surface of the water, like that. And you can also, with the dry brush here and there, just come back and you know, bump up some of those little lines here and there. But doing this with the dry brush like that is nice because it sort of hits the surface of the canvas and makes it look a little bit sort of sparkly as it hits the, the weave of the canvas. But I'm just going to add a little bit more color here to it now just to, you know, take it a bit further and you decide how far you want to take it. But really the truth is there's possibly two or three different paintings at different stages in this process that we've just done. So I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow light here and I'm just going to do this like that and I'm also going to just here and there in the foreground do that and now I'm going to add a bit of red to that and nice dry brush very very dry brush just get up into that area there with the red. And lastly, a little bit of phthalo blue and a very dry brush. And I'm going to get my little rainbow spectrum in there like that. And while I've got that blue there, I might just soften back some of that extraneous stuff out in the out in the edges like that. So there's an OCD part of me that wants to to tweak this, but 
as far as an exercise is concerned, we've actually covered quite a few things. We've covered, you know, the appearance of water in limited light. We've looked at where we can and can't add colour to water. We're starting to understand the, the shapes that a wave makes. Um, there's a lot more detail in my Wave Fundamentals DVD, in case you're uh, curious. But, you know, you can see this is a nice, simple image and it's certainly been fun to do. <laughs> and also, if you want to see some more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe.